Okay, folks, the other day, I think it was either three or four days ago, I started this and I've worked on it twice since. The reason I'm telling you that is because I don't think if you, if you present yourself correctly and have the right horse, that you don't need to send a horse off to a trainer for 60 days. So I've shared with you already that this horse, I'm fixing him in the western bit. The way he's built, and he's kind of stiff, there was no point in messing with my snaffle because there's not a lot of lateral flexion in there. And I knew that if I could explain to him what I wanted, once he got it through his head what it needed to do, then he would calm down over time. And it's not a cop out, but I'm gonna tell you that all horses are different. And this particular horse, that's his MO and that's the way I treated it. How did I know? Because I've been doing this a long time. And uh, as my bride pointed out that on the ranch, when you get cut a string of horses and you got a horse like this one, you know that throughout the year between branding and shipping, you're gonna get a handle on them because you ride them so much. Well. I know that if I'm loading a whole bunch of trucks, and I hate to keep being redundant about trucks, but that's the truth about ranching. Well, if you're if you're you got time in between trucks and you've started what I'm about to do, you can have it by the end of the day on a horse that isn't mad. Now, interestingly enough, this horse's name is Patron. Patron, for you folks that live north of Albuquerque, that means boss. Well, he thinks he's the boss, okay? Well, what I did was I, I made him a CEO. I don't know how you say that in Spanish, but the point is I'm not gonna beat the hell out of him and dominate him. I'm just simply telling him you are a patron because you're a very aggressive horse, but I am also a patron. And at the moment, I happen to be higher than you are. So that's just something I wanted to share with you. But what I got, the reason I was able to go with the Western bit is because he's light and he bridles up really nice and really easy. I have to put it on the rest of the horses usually. So I just want to show you from the other day where he's at. And what he did was he figured out to listen to my leg. And the thing to watch is how much my left hand does. So once again, it's about getting the math right. And when I ask him, He moves off my leg. Now, our partner Mare, she kind of shared with me this morning I need to elaborate more, so I'm gonna. When I get right in front of the camera, I'm gonna stop the horse by dropping my spine. When I sit down, that means stop, and I exhale. Before that, I'm high on my seat bones so my horse can listen to my skeleton. So now, when I stop, there's very little pull. I did make contact, but I'm not pulling hard. He gets that. He understands it now. Right shoulder, left leg, hind quarter stays, horse turns. Left turn, or excuse me, you make a right turn, your right leg comes off, your left leg curls, you're telling the horse with your calf, watch my left foot, here it comes. I didn't touch the horse with the spur. I'm sitting up. I'm not sitting down like this and turning him like a cutter. I'm sitting up so that he can hear my seat bones clearly. Now you see him hitting his bones still, that's gonna go away. I don't worry about that. They get tired of beating on their own legs. And what you do is you do not put on bell boots and splint boots and whatever else they sell in town, don't do it. It'll take you longer to get them right. Believe me, they get tired of doing that. I'm sure you've seen in, uh, I think it was Gandhi's book. It said that when you're having hell, the reason why people beat their head on a pole is because it feels so good when they quit. So just put that into this and you, you're set for life. Shoulder, right, roll, calf, horse turns. Stop, backwards, right leg, turn. Asking, pulling to the hindquarter, asking, 
asking 360. If you want to see him spin, you're not gonna. It ain't gonna happen. I don't need to spin. I know which direction I want to go. I don't have to go around and around to figure it out. That would be overexposing the horse. Now, side passing. This is how you find out if your horse is listening to your body or not, because I got him turning around. So now, theoretically, every time I move my calf, he thinks he's going to turn. Well, to prove that he is listening to my seat bones, I side pass. Prove meaning prove to myself how well he's listening. So when I make contact, I'm going to sit up again, look to my right, put my left calf on, and be ready with my left hand at every time I feel his skeleton start to move forward, or forward one quarter of one inch, I check and give it back. I do not hold. If you hold the horse in position, you're going to fail. You've got to give it back, and he will learn to do this on a loose rein. I will look, drop my left seat bone, turn my left hand out, say, excuse me, here it comes. I need you to walk sideways. Thank you so much. Now I need your forehand to come around. Hind quarter over. You're fine. Think about it. There, side pass. Hind quarter, forehand, side pass. But watch my left hand. If you have a tight rein, you're gonna fail. Now I'm gonna skip this hole because I need to get his confidence up. I lean forward to move his hip over, looking. Right leg off, drop left seat bone, leaning forward, reaching back, hind quarter, side pass, forehand through, which is done with my right shoulder, hind quarter over, which is by displacing my weight, going left, left leg is off, right calf is on, hind quarter, forehand, side pass. The most important part I want you to watch is my left hand. Now, in his mind, he knows exactly what I'm asking through my body. In his brain, he's going, okay, I'll do it. I don't care that much for it, but I'll do it. That's the difference in the horse's brains. There's a lot of horses that are saying, which way should I go? Show me, help me, I'll go anywhere you want. Some horses say, you know what, I'm doing it, but I'd, I'd rather be doing something different. It's nothing personal. This is the most important part once again. So, I, I mentioned a little something about Hawaii, and I want to tell you something else. Is that When they first started catching wild cattle up in the hills, because that's where they were, some of them guys would dig a pit, and then they'd put up sharp sticks and or just dig a pit and then kill them somehow in the pit. Well, the problem is now you got a dead big critter in a pit. The natives would bring salt up from the beach and they would dress this thing out and salt the beef and pack it all back down. Well, just think of the logistics of that of a 1,200 pound animal or 1,000 pounds. So when the Española showed up that could rope, they were able to catch the cattle, bring them down to the beach alive, what we call orejanos in the southwest. Then they would kill them on the beach. The salt was already there. The ships came to the beach. They didn't come to the mountains. So it solved a whole lot of problems by going up in the mountains and getting them. That's how this business evolved. And then the Paniolos who were watching the natives, they've started to figure out riding, roping, the whole thing. So it evolved into the Paniolo from the Española. Anyway, this is the most important part. So this horse, his attitude. In my heart, I believe just by using him over time and you don't betray him, as in lose your temper or pull too hard, he'll calm down. That's what they do. After a while, they're like, okay. 
Or is that what this is all about? That's, that's what I've felt in horses over the years, is that if you'll just do what I did on this particular horse, this situation, which you're gonna run into, don't expect them to be hunting you up in the corral. Over time, they'll calm down. I'm going to ask him to go that way. Excuse me, seat bone, leg off, ask, think. Think, here it comes, thank you so much. You're fine, just think about it. That's all you need to do. The amount of time I spent to do this video is how long you spend training them. 20 minutes is the tops when I'm really trying to put something on an older horse. So like the other day, and I don't know, whenever I worked him, then I go out and go for a ride. That's what really makes them settle in. I don't take them back, give them grain, and put them in the corral. It's not how it works. So now that I've got my lateral work, I've got my reverse, and I'm getting a nice stop on him, I'll be able to go tomorrow and day work, and we'll work cattle in the corral because we're going to gather, and I'll feel very comfortable working him in the alley. I'm, I'm not scared of it. So I just want to show you, he's got a good walk outside. Now the secret to this whole thing, if there's a secret, here's what you don't do. This is how you ruin a horse, hanging on him. This is how you don't ruin a horse, loose rein. If you don't have the guts to ride a horse with loose rein, then quit riding. It's not fair to a good horse to be hanging on their mouth all the time. Never train a horse, just outlast him. I don't have to go to the Futurity in Reno. I just got to work him in corrals and let him feel good about it. Excuse me, girls. Oh, and that reminds me, if you can't breathe well, don't do this. I mean, I know I'm a lunger, but you gotta be able to exhale whenever you ask a horse to do something. That makes them calmer quicker. If you hold your breath every time you try to do something like this gait, A, you'll turn purple, and B, you'll fall off. So remember, breathing from your core is kinda important in this horse deal. Now, you can tell I worked on a sheep outfit because all my gates drag. Kind of proud of that. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later.